guys are well. Today I have the marathon of all marathons for you. I have compiled all of my clean declutter and organization motivation videos for 2024 for you. If you are somebody who has just been putting off getting your home decluttered and organized, this is gonna be perfect for you. It'll be a starting point. It will give you a ton of affordable ideas, some inspiration, some motivation. If you're new here and you like these videos, I hope you'll stick around and hit that subscribe button. We are gonna get all the things done today in the videos and definitely come back next time on Saturday for an all new video. I hope you guys are having an incredible day, an incredible week. Grab a big coffee and enjoy all the videos. Welcome, my name is Trisha Miller. I hope you'll stick around today. So I am very excited. I've been looking forward to this for a very long time. The day has finally come to start my declutter and organize series. I have a goal for 2024 to declutter and organize our home, top to bottom, side to side, every deep dark corner of it. We are starting with the most important room today and that is the kitchen. I feel like that is where I spend my entire life. So every time I've been opening a drawer or opening a cabinet and things have been falling out and attacking me, the anticipation has built. It is finally time. I also, before we get started, I want to remind you guys, I am giving away $100 to say thank you to all of my subscribers. My one year YouTube anniversary is coming up on February 3rd. All you have to do is enter. All you have to do to enter is to make sure you're subscribed to my channel, watch all my videos in January, and leave a comment. That's it. Thank you to everybody who left comments on my last video. I really love hearing from you guys, so I hope this will continue after the giveaway. I just love getting to know you, hearing all about your lives, so please, please, please keep leaving those comments. All right, let's make a big iced coffee and get started. Let's talk strategy. I have to have a plan in order for this to be successful. So the first thing I did was clean the kitchen. So it's pretty decent right now. I need a lot of empty counter space. I have my dining room table so that I have places to put the things that I wanna donate, things that might need to be thrown away because they're broken, things that I need to take out of the cabinet for a moment so that I can put it back in to organize it. So first step was to go ahead and clean the kitchen. So I have a nice, clean, empty, slate to begin with. I think our plan is to start with this side of the kitchen and then just keep working our way until we're done. We got this. All right, let's start. Okay, here's our first section. I think my plan is gonna be like top to bottom, move over to the next one, top to bottom, and just go that way. So we've got this cabinet up here. Oh yeah, lots to go through in that. This drawer. Not too bad, but definitely could be a little bit better. And then this is the cabinet where I put all of our mixing bowls and baking sheets, stuff like that. All right, let's get started. I'm gonna follow the same method for each area that we declutter and organize today, and that is removing everything from the space. That way I can go in and vacuum up any dust or anything that's in there, get it nice and clean and just a clean slate to begin with, and then go through all the things I removed be very real with myself about what I should go ahead and donate and then put everything back in a more organized way that just makes so much more sense. So what I am going to do is I'm going through and decluttering all the things that I know right away I'm ready to donate or get rid of. And then 
I have, you know, the few items where I have that internal debate of will I use it, won't I use it, things that have survived past declutterings. What are some things that have survived your declutters before? Do you go back and look at them and declutter them the second time? There are some things, I'll admit, that have made it through several declutter situations in our house, but today is the day. They will not make it through a third. We are going to donate today. This drawer is a good example of a space that is organized, but just because something is organized doesn't mean you don't need to reorganize that. So it wasn't working. We had these ketchup packets and these sauce packets from Chick-fil-A in there for a very long time, which by the way, I could not find expiration dates on those. I looked, so it was time to get rid of them. And then I just wanted to reorganize it. It wasn't working the way that it, we had it. The spoons were shoved under the measuring cups. We couldn't find them. So. You don't always have to keep a system. You can always reorganize to whatever works best for you. Okay, I, we've had these for almost two years, so I think they're gonna have to be thrown away. And then I can put these in a different spot with all of our other paper products and plastic utensils in the pantry. As much as I would love to think that I will use this to open an avocado, it just doesn't happen. So I'm gonna donate these, we don't need these, donate, donate, and donate. And then I think the drawer is so much better now. She goes her own way, like I don't give a damn girl. And my God, she owns it. So many heartbreaks, goes back to 2014. And I think that she knows it. And if you've seen her, I know that you would believe it, cause I, I know that Okay, here's a strategy for something that you haven't used yet, but you keep telling yourself you're gonna use and you really wanna keep it because you really, really like it. Put an expiration date. So I bought these last summer. They're very cute. They're little whale dipping trays. I mean, you can use them for a lot of different things. Not dipping trays, dipping bowls. But I didn't use them last summer and I'm pretty sure I bought them at the beginning of the summer. So I'm gonna get them. Hold on, I dropped my post-it notes. Okay, I'm back. I'm going to give them an expiration date of July. That way it'll be halfway through the summer. I'm not gonna give these guys until August. If I don't use them until, you know, and through July, I'm donating them. So I highly recommend doing expiration dates so that you can be real with yourself if you don't use them. Now, this might motivate you to use them by the expiration date. Then say to yourself, okay, maybe I'll give a second expiration date because I'm sure I'll use these by July since I know I have a timeline. But then if I don't use them again the rest of the summer, I don't need to keep them. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna trick myself into seeing if I actually really use them. So I like this strategy. It works for me. Highly recommend it. All right, let's give them a little expiration date. what this is 
except it's labeled a crown bracket and a flexible duct. These have been here since we moved into our new construction home 16, 17 months ago. I have no idea why we kept them. I don't even know where they go. Let me know in the comments. Where does a crown bracket go? A flexible duct, should it be in our home somewhere and it's missing? Is that gonna be a problem later? I'm guessing it's probably extra. I don't know, I'm gonna have to consult Steven on this one. If we keep it, it definitely needs to go in the garage, not taking up an entire shelf in our kitchen. I leave the TV on, I'm done with your side. much better now I do want to put all of my spices at least the smaller containers down here into pretty jars with labels I just don't think that's gonna happen today because then I'm gonna lose focus and momentum so for right now they're gonna stay there so stay tuned for a future video we make that look a lot prettier but then up here I have my bigger spices and I love using the Tina Turner's because now I can reach everything and I don't have to like be reaching behind and knocking stuff over so I have all of my sprays there and then some more cooking oils up here. And then Steven's little secret candy stash up there. He's super tall, so he can reach that no problem. But the kids can't reach it, so this is perfect. This drawer is what motivated me to actually start this deep clutter series. It's, it's just too much. There's too much stuff. And this is a good example where you could still really like something and use it on occasion, but it doesn't mean there's still a place for it in your home or that you need it in abundance. I had too many spatulas. I had so many different whisks. I've never used a whisk before. I'll be very honest there. I just tend to grab a fork if there's something that I have to whisk, so I donated all three of those. So again, you could like something, you could use something, but it doesn't mean you need five of them. This is my all of my meal prep containers, so I use it very frequently. I just wanted to rearrange things so it wasn't so bottom heavy and then use the top a little bit more efficiently. It just wasn't organized and I, it just wasn't a good use of space there. So I just want to rearrange this. And if you are into healthy meal preps or you have some new health goals for the new year, I just wanted to give you a little plug. My video on Tuesday will be a healthy meal prep for the week. I'm gonna share a grocery haul, my meal plan, how I plan dinners for the week with our family, talk about some swaps that I do so that I can still reach my health goals but not feel like I'm making 87 dinners to appease everybody every night. So definitely stay tuned on Tuesday for that one. So 
So these drawers I feel good about. We don't need to do anything. Stephen and I have done a really good job, in my opinion, of just buying pots and pans that we need. And so that's really organized. And then down here, we just have two larger ones and then the thing that goes on our stove. So I feel really good about that. So I'm gonna leave these drawers as is. I wanna take some time to talk to you guys about my mindset with decluttering and organizing and my motivation behind all of it. I am a person who gets very overwhelmed and overstimulated with a lot of stuff around. I tend to get in a grumpy mood. I'm just not the person I want to be when I just get overstimulated by all the stuff. And I notice that my kids tend to be the same way. They are just, they just thrive. When our house is organized, when we have systems set up, they just do so much better than when it's not organized and things are not set up. And so my motivation is just to keep our family healthy and happy and feel peaceful in our own home. And so a big thing, a phrase that I keep coming back to for myself is just protect your peace. And for me, having an organized and decluttered home definitely protects my peace. I also just think it's really nice to donate things. I always think about who I could be helping when I'm donating an item and that really helps me on the items that I am just torn whether or not I'm going to keep it. I just think, is this really bringing value to my life? Probably not if it's just sitting in the back of a cabinet or in a closet and I really focus on what value it could bring to somebody else. And speaking of donations, a huge tip that I have for you is go ahead and schedule your donation before you do your declutter project. So I have, we live in Virginia and we have the AMVETS and they can, you can schedule online and pick the date that they will come and put everything out on your front porch and they will come and pick it up. And that's huge for me. And I scheduled that donation for the very next day after I did this declutter because it also gives you, if you're quick with your donations, it doesn't give you time to take things back and kind of have second thoughts about it. It's gone, it's out of sight, out of mind. And if you don't have a donation center that will come and pick up from you, just schedule your day so that you will go immediately that afternoon or that next day to drop off your donations. It really makes such a difference to have that plan in place. This cabinet, there's definitely some stuff we can declutter, especially up here. I would like to take the mugs and use a little bit more up there so we don't have to double stack them. So let's just see what we can get rid of. Okay, I have another little pep talk and words of wisdom for you. It is okay to have empty space. It is okay to have empty shelves in your kitchen and not fill them with anything. When I see empty shelves in our house, it just brings such peace to my mind. You should try it and see if it does it for you. Okay, much better. I put wine glasses up there and then just like everyday glasses right there. All of my mugs that I would use for tea, the smaller ones are gonna go there. And then here is all of the coffee mugs. And then I'm gonna donate all of these. Okay, I have a situation and I wanna share all the good, bad, and ugly of a decluttering series. So I will be honest here, this is a mug that Liam made for me. It's super cute. It doesn't say when he made it, but I think it's his little thumbprint. I've never used this mug before and I know there's a lot of things that I have already held on to that he has made with his sweet little hands. I was gonna do an expiration date on this, but I know I'm not gonna drink out of it. There's just so many other mugs that I gravitate towards and it's smaller, so I would never have a teeny tiny cup of coffee. I go large when I go coffee. For my tea, again, it's hand wash only. I just, I know I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna talk myself out of it. I'm not gonna talk myself into it, I'm gonna talk myself out of it. So I guess this is just, a public service announcement to anybody who's feeling the guilt of getting rid of something that their kids made for them. You gotta release the guilt. If we hold on to every single thing that they make for us, our house will just be taken over. So let this be your justification. You can get rid of stuff, especially if it's hand wash only. Now some very important information if you are going to get rid of stuff that your kids made for you. 
you have to hide it in the trash can or in the donation bag because they will come for you if they see you getting rid of stuff they made you. I wanted to refill my bag holders while we were in there. And I will say, I really like these bag holders. It's one of those products where I hesitated thinking it was just a little bit too extra, but it's not. They actually hold the bags really well and keep everything organized, especially when little hands are grabbing bags. It just works better than the box that they come in. And then you'll see me making an expiration date for my food scale. I used it a lot more last year, but I just haven't really been using it lately. So it's one of those items where even though I've used it a bunch in the past, it no longer is serving me right now for where I am at in life, so I'll give it an expiration date. If I don't use it, then it's time to donate it. This cabinet has become a bottomless pit for us. It holds so much stuff, but not in a good way because you forget things that are in there. And so I wanted to declutter. And then when I go back to organize everything, I wanted to make sure I could actually see everything that was in there so that I will actually use it and remember that I have it. And the things that are brand new in their package that have just been sitting there, clearly we've survived without them for this long. So it was time to donate them. recycle all of the user manuals that I've been holding on to. I'm not a read the manual kind of a person, neither is my husband, so we're just going to rely on Alexa or Google if we need to figure something out. Okay, this is our cabinet above our microwave and oven. I did already organize this in a video a few months ago. I will link that video. I'm just gonna clean it up really quickly, make sure there's nothing I can declutter, and then we'll move on. Those of you who were judging me for throwing away the cup that Liam made, I'll have you know those pot holders were made by my children. So let's be friends again. I feel like everybody has one item that they don't really use, but they feel like it's something they have to hold on to. And for me, that's a bunt pan. Cannot think of any time that I've ever used a bunt pan. I have two of them. I am gonna declutter and donate one of them, but I just have to hold on to that one for, I don't even know why, I can't justify it. What is your one item that you always hold on to that you never use? Okay, we are making really good progress. We are now on to the blue cabinets. I wanna show you, I don't have to do anything with these. 
This is just where I put, and I'll give you a close up, all of my microfiber cloths, and then our dish towels go in the bottom two drawers. So this, is, this stays really, really organized. I also just removed my holiday towels the other day. So, and then I put back in like winter towels and just like neutral every day of the year type of towels. So this is good, I'll show it to you, and this was just a trash can. So we'll move on to baking sheets and cutting boards in the far cabinet, and then we'll finish up all the white cabinets. And then I think the last thing we'll do is the other side of the island, which is gonna be a lot, because that's, those are the kids' cabinets. They're bad. All right, let's keep going. So here's everything I'm going to donate. As much as I wanted to be the person that uses these to clean my bottles, I just don't. So I'm going to donate those. This is an example of something that I love so much, but I just never use it, no matter what. So I'm just going to donate that. Donate this guy. I, I always get so excited when Starbucks does these and I'm not gonna do it anymore. I'm not gonna go on the day just to get the hot beverage, to get these cups, because I know that I'm not going to use them. All right, I'm gonna keep going. All right, it's junk drawer time. Look at that junk drawer. Oh my goodness, it's used multiple times a day by my children, by Steven and I. So when a lot of people are using a space, it just tends to look like that and that's okay. The junk drawer is the spot where you typically have to declutter and reorganize it all the time and that's okay. You're allowed to have that space in your home. Junk drawers exist for a reason. It doesn't have to be Pinterest perfect everywhere in your home. That is the junk drawer's existence. But we are taking it on today. The junk drawer will not win today. I will win today. I will get that junk drawer organized and then probably in a couple more weeks, We'll be back here and we'll reorganize it again. We can do this. I've reached the point where I want to give up because I know what is to come, but we're gonna keep on going. I purposely saved the hardest part of this project, which is these cabinets and then those two cabinets on the island. I saved them for last. Normally I start with the hardest thing and then work my way to the easiest, but I was worried if I started with these cabinets, I would get burnt out and not wanna finish. So far it's working because I am motivated to do it. I don't want to do it, but I am motivated to do it because I know it's gonna feel so good. So we're just gonna do this, but I just want you to know it's okay to kind of flip your mindset when you take on certain projects if you need to, and that's what I did this time. All right, let's keep going. Did my explanation just make sense? I might have just confused things. The whole point is I started with the easiest part of our kitchen and I ended with the hardest because I knew when I took on a big project like this, that I would burn out if I started with the hardest part. And it actually worked. And I will say these cabinets that I'm doing right now, the kids' cabinets, weren't as bad as I thought they were. They actually went pretty quickly. I'm just taking everything out. Then I'm going to declutter, recycle papers that they had already drawn on and things like that, make my donation pile. And then I ended up having a bunch of empty bins once I did that. And again, I'm not gonna fill them because empty space is okay. 
and I will just save those bins and put them in there. And then this summer, the summertime is when I tend to refill them and kind of reorganize things so that the kids have extra stuff to do during the summer. So we'll revisit those empty bins in the summer and it just feels really good to get this done and it's okay to save the hardest thing for last because sometimes oh, that's the nice reward at the end. Once you finish the hard thing, you're done. Okay, this is the last area we have to do. It's definitely gonna be the most challenging. I did get these from the Target dollar spot. They have them right now, they're $5 each. I think these, yeah, these smaller ones are only $3. And my plan is to use them in these two cabinets. So let me show you what we're working with here. I do have some system set up. I mean, it's a disaster right now. But like, this is where I keep all the papers that come that we need to file away eventually. And then in here, this is where, oh gosh, yeah, there's a lot. I mean, we don't even use the top two shelves because I can't really reach them. But this is where I have a file folder for each of the kids. So papers throughout the year that I feel like I want to keep long term, I put those in there. Okay, and then these drawers, I have the organization bins already in here and like, you know, some sort of a system with our battery organizer. But I just need to go through and clean stuff up. We don't need to have all these screwdrivers in here, like put things back to where they actually belong. And then over here, it's kind of the same thing. It's just a hodgepodge of random stuff. Like Rory's six years old now. Pretty sure I don't need labels for bottles for her anymore. It's kind of hard to let go of that stuff, right? All right, so we'll go through this. And then down here, this is where it gets even more random. We have our homework bin. If you watched my back to school organization video this fall, I apologize for what has become of our homework bin. It is still a good system, we just have to get it cleaned up. And then just a bunch of random stuff in here that's been shoved in there, so we'll go through that. And then the last cabinet is this one. I can definitely declutter some of all those vases down there. I had a system going like envelopes and stuff were there, tape and tape. Well, one was flashlights, one was tape. Now they're all put back together. So we just have to clean everything up and declutter.
all this stuff I do have to go through and I know it's gonna take a good chunk of time. These are just all the cords and I wanna do that part with Steven. And then these are just binders. This is where I keep all my recipes. So I just wanna update that and then find a spot for that one. But I think I'm just gonna take tonight when Steven and I are watching a movie and just knock it out and then I'll be done with it. These are all the donations that we were able to get together. It feels so good to get rid of this stuff and pass it on to somebody who will actually use it. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope this gave you a starting point and some motivation and ideas for your own decluttering project. Make sure you hit that subscribe button to follow along for more. And don't forget about my giveaway. Leave me a comment. I'll see you guys next time. you are well if you're new here welcome my name is Trisha Miller I hope you'll stick around hit that subscribe button because today is episode two of my whole house declutter and organization series and we are going to focus on the office I cannot wait I'm gonna share all my tips and tricks for my decluttering and organizing help us get over that mental block of wanting to hold on to things that we don't need I also want to remind you especially if you're new I am offering a hundred dollar cash giveaway for the month of January this is just to say thank you for all of my subscribers for giving me all of this support my first year as a youtuber all you have to do to enter is to make sure that you're subscribed to my channel watch all my videos in January and leave a comment that's it I will have all of that information pinned in the comment section. It's also in the video description box. Let's get started. Okay, here are the three stations that I have set up before we begin. This is gonna be for donations. This is going to be for things that I wanna keep but don't belong in this room. So kind of the put away after we're done bin. And then over here, I have a trash bag hanging from the door for things that cannot be donated. When I take on a big organization and declutter project, I like to do it section by section bin by bin, cabinet by cabinet. That way, if you wanna take a break for a day, a week, a month, you haven't really disturbed the rest of the room. You haven't created more of a mess that you then have to live with until you get back to it. And so even though I plan on doing the entire room, I still follow that same method. And I am starting right now with my Cricut shelves. Here is my method every single time. I take everything out, because I truly believe that is the only way to see everything you have. I can't even tell you how many items were hidden in that Cricut shelf and just throughout the office. So it really makes a difference to take the time to just pull everything out, see what you have. And then I form two piles, one for donations, one for things that I just have to throw away, and then technically three piles. And then the third pile are for the things that I wanna keep. And so then when I go back to put the things that I'm going to keep, I do it in an organized way, or as organized as possible. When I have open shelving like that, I tend to try to be a little bit more organized so it's not something that will stress me out when I look at it. And I put like things with like things. So what I mean by that, for my Cricut products, I'm putting all of my permanent vinyl together, I'm putting all of my iron-on vinyl together, all of the accessories are gonna go on that bottom shelf, and that way I know that all of my products will be exactly where I need them to be and I can see all the colors that are available and nothing is going to waste. Are you a sticky note person? I write everything on sticky notes. 
have a solution for us because I cannot live like this anymore. I will share that method that I am going to try to decrease the number of sticky notes that I use in a little bit, but first we have got to get my desk in check. So I'm going through all the different bins, all the pens, just doing that same system where I have my donation pile, my trash pile, and then my pile of things that I wanna keep. And I am going to color coordinate my pens and markers and pencils into the shades of the rainbow. I think it looks beautiful. I love it when people organize this way. And so I try to do that in our office. I think it just sparks creativity and inspiration when you're surrounded by these colors in your work environment. In our main part of our house, I have it more neutral. I think balance is important. It can get a little overstimulating if there's lots of bright colors all around you all the time. But in the office, I just love it. to rearrange how I had the top of my desk organized. Something I really focused on in my last declutter video with our kitchen is just reminding you guys that once something is organized, it doesn't mean that it's always organized. It's important to just look at our systems. If they're no longer working for us, change it. And so I decided to move my candle warming lamp to the other side. I didn't love how it looked like I had two lamps right next to each other. And by the way, I love candle warming lamps. I don't trust myself to remember to blow out candles. So this is just a nice, safer way for me to enjoy my candles. And I just like the flow now of the desk better. And I can always rearrange things when I need to use my Cricut. note obsessed people here is my solution I made this over on my Instagram account so I will link that for you on the screen but it's at Miller family vibes if you want to watch how I made this but I'm taking a picture frame so I can have it sit on my desk and this is going to essentially be a dry erase board so now when I'm editing videos where I would typically write on a sticky note really quickly I can just write on here all of my reminders I can do a to-do list on here I can write a fun Valentine's quote for my family on here. So many possibilities, and I'm gonna switch out the background with each holiday or season, and I think this is gonna be a good solution to save on those sticky notes for when I really, really need them, because I've gotten to the point where I write on the sticky notes so much that they don't really trigger my brain to remember something because I'm so used to seeing them everywhere, so this is gonna be my new method to try. I want to say thank you to several of my subscribers who gave me the suggestion in my last declutter video to save any mugs that the kids make and just use them and repurpose them for like a pen holder or something. So this is a mug that Liam made for me from his artwork. So I'm putting it on my desk. The colors match perfectly in the office. So thank you so much for that suggestion. I have gotten really hardcore about being intentional about what I keep versus what I'll recycle that the kids make. And it's just an intentional process that I think takes a long time to get used to because it is hard. It is so hard to get rid of the things that their sweet little hands make for you, but your house can just get so cluttered by it. So I've gotten so much better about it. I am by no means perfect at it, but I hope that I can inspire you guys to be very intentional with what you are keeping. I like to have a bin that I keep for each of the kids and just any artwork that I know I'm gonna want later on, I will hold on to in that bin. But another method that is just so easy is take a picture of it with your phone. 
Take a picture, then you can always go back and look at it and know that you still have it in case you wanted to print it out again or just see it. So I'm currently looking on the bins and this was definitely a deep, dark, cluttered corner in the office. I love large storage bins, but the one negative to them is that things hide in there so easily and it's just a big old clutter spot. It's so easy to accumulate clutter in them when they're so big and you can just add more and more and more to them. So. Big does not mean better when it comes to bins and I had so much paperwork that we no longer needed in there that I'm gonna recycle. And as far as paperwork, taking a picture of important papers is another good method when you're taking pictures because then you have what you need and you don't have to hold on to the actual paper. But if you do take those pictures, get a file system like on your Google Drive so you immediately download those pictures so that you're not searching for them later on. Okay, we're taking a very necessary break refill the iced coffee. You know how around the holidays calories don't count? Well I say when you are working on a decluttering and organization project, caffeine doesn't count. walk you through my organization system that I've already been using that's really been working well. So this whole pegboard is from Ikea and all of the different attachments are from Ikea. So I will link all those products for you in the video description box. But up here I keep all of my planner and calendar stickers so that I can grab them when I need them. I have all of my sticky notes in here so these come in and out. And actually we can probably refill that because I've taken a bunch out lately so I keep sticky notes down here. Surprise, surprise, more pens. I know I have a pen problem. And then I have just an empty cup there. This is where I keep my push pins and then some Cricut accessories. I have a mini stapler in here with staples, my scissors. This is probably my favorite feature because then I can access my scissors. I know where they are. I'm somebody who always loses scissors. I don't know why, but makes it easy right there. And then I just have some stuff that the kids made up there. And then I keep a shelf here for just some memorabilia, stuff that the kids made me, all that good stuff. If you watched my New Year's video recently, we did these inspirational quotes together. I have my work calendar, and then I have my workout calendar. We're now in just a little corner where we keep our printer, and it's on a table. There were two things that I wanted to change over here. I ordered a second table. It's the exact same table that the printer is on, but it's for our 3D printer that's currently sitting on the floor. We were gifted it over the holidays, and we're so excited to use it, but we haven't set it up yet because we just didn't really have a home for it. So the table unfortunately came after you guys. I filmed this, so I'm so sorry, but picture that table right there but another one right next to it with our 3D printer on there because I think it's important just to have the little stations with all of the accessories. So the second thing I needed to change here, we had our printer ink in another location, extra printer paper in another location, so I just wanted to get it all next to the printer, next to the tool that's going to need it, and it just made it work so much better. Okay, I'll walk you through the organization system we have set up behind Steven's desk. And then he has a shelf just like me where we put just artwork that the kids do or pictures and things like that. So over here, I have those same pullout drawers that I had my sticky notes in for paper clips, some larger binder clips, and then some smaller binder clips. And then I have these cups with all of my different scissors that have, they cut like different patterns and you know I had to color coordinate it for the rainbow. And then these are just some special pens. They do like outlines when you draw with them. And then up here, I have extra accessories for the pegboard. So there's this thing, This it's just a clip, and I could click that in there. And it also comes with 
some hooks that I could put in. So I'm just holding on to these because I'm sure I will use them at some point. And then let's go over here. I have all of the permanent markers and so I just have those organized by color. I have my hole punch. This is where I'm keeping our papers as we get our forms for our taxes this year or for 2023, so I'm gonna keep them in there. And then this is where when I print out a new recipe I wanna try, I just keep it in here. All right, I think next up, I just wanna take care of everything that's on the floor over here because I want to vacuum this rug. And then we'll go to this shelf, go through these bins, and then we will take all of this on. This room was definitely desperate for a vacuum session. Look at how full it got. Good morning, everybody. It is day two of our office declutter and organize project. I ended up stopping yesterday because I felt burnt out. I wasn't in the mood. I wasn't motivated anymore. And I think it's really important to listen to your body when it is time to stop. It is time to stop. And I'm glad I did because I woke up today so much more motivated, got all the energy, Yes, when in doubt, caffeinate. That's always my philosophy. However, there was not enough caffeine in our refrigerator yesterday to sustain me. So I'm glad that I waited. I feel really good. I'm excited to take on this closet today. We have the shelves and really just get things organized. This is the fun part. I don't always look forward to the decluttering, but I really look forward to the organization. Let's get started. I wanna show you something I did last night. So I took this basket and I put all of my notebooks that I use pretty regularly in there. And then this is my basket for returns. I like to have things that I need to return just visible so I don't forget about them. And then this is just an empty basket that we can use. And I'm already using my whiteboard. I love this. This is so fun just to put the little to-do list on or just little daily reminders. Love this idea. I leave the TV. Hi, my name is Trisha Miller, and I have an unhealthy love of colorful pens and seasonal hand towels. Okay, these pens kept me up at night. I am being a complete hypocrite if I hold on to all of these pens, but yet I'm trying to motivate you and inspire you to declutter your spaces. I don't need hundreds of colorful pens, even though I love them. So if I don't change, things won't change. So I am going through all of my pens now this morning. It's intentionally the very first thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put as many as I can in this basket, especially the ones that I know I am not using, and I know that they're good pens that somebody else can use. And I'm gonna use my method where I give them an expiration date. So I'm gonna take a sticky note, I'm gonna put it on top, I'm gonna give them an expiration date of one month from now, which will be St. Patrick's Day. And if I don't touch these pens, then they are getting donated. And I'm actually gonna try to do this once a month until I really whittle them down. But this method works really well for me, so I hope you'll try it for yourself. It just holds me accountable to a set date, and I've never had a situation where I use the item before the expiration date, so it's a necessary process for me. This shelf had a lot of items that I call our just-in-case items like a box of 100 white envelopes that we keep just in case we start mailing a bunch of things. The tool that we built the shelf with just in case we need the tool again, but we don't, we never use them. So I'm just being very real with myself as I go through this and just only keeping the things that I know we need and then I'm going to either donate, recycle, or throw away the items that we no longer are gonna use.
adjust their computer that I'm not. I'm gonna donate this to somebody who is. Same thing for microfiber cleaning cloths. I always think I'm gonna use them, so I hold on to them, but I don't. before. I am a former high school teacher. So I guess I held on to my hole punches. I have oh about 25 a class set of hole punches in here. I think it is time to donate those. Okay let me show you how I organize these. So this one is completely empty. And remember, just because you have an empty space, that doesn't mean you need to fill it. And then this is all of my command strips. And then down here, I have some greeting cards. And I'm, I know I have greeting cards in other places, I think in the closet, so I'm gonna move them over here. And then we have the kids' Polaroid cameras, extra school supplies, and then more extra school supplies. Okay, the time has come to take on my colorful everything closet. So these are from Ikea. It's a rod and a bracket system. I don't know if they still have them, but if they have them, I will link them. So I wanna get the ribbons all cleaned up. And then up here, I have all of my gift bags. So we definitely need to go through those. I can donate a bunch of those. I wanna organize all the paper up there figure out all of this. A lot of it is just putting stuff back away, but also decluttering. I know there's some stuff in here. I did this closet last spring and I will link that video for you in case you wanna see how I organized it. But stuff that I haven't used since last spring can absolutely be donated. All right, let's go. When I originally did the makeover on this closet, I did love how it turned out and I love all the organization that I got set up in there, but the one thing I didn't do was declutter. And so now it's important for me to go through, just because I have a space for something doesn't mean I need to hold on to it. So I'm trying to be real with myself, especially with things like gift bags. I had held on to all of the gift bags from my baby showers from all three of my kids. And I just, I don't have that many friends now that are still having babies. So I picked two of my favorite bags and I'm just gonna donate the rest of them. And so just things like that, going through and just being honest with ourselves about what we truly need. Because really the main reason that I like to declutter, having a lot of stuff everywhere in my environment, yes, it takes up space, but it also takes up space in my mind. I feel so much better when we don't have things just lying around everywhere, where we have organization. It just makes our life run so much smoother. And I think everybody deserves to live in a clutter-free, organized environment. Everybody deserves to feel at peace in their home. And having that system in our house just makes me feel at peace. Our whole family thrives when we just don't have stuff everywhere. And another thing, a bonus, is that it saves money. It saves so much money to be organized. I can't, I don't know why I was buying gift bags for the past year. I have all of these gift bags and I, as we were going through and I was decluttering and organizing them, I did it by holiday. So I put all of my Valentine's bags front and center so I now know exactly what I have so I don't need to buy any more Valentine's bags. So it's just, it saves money, it saves stress. I just, it makes me feel so good to do this. Live your life within the moment, moment And don't go wait until the morning, morning You never know when it is over, over All that I know is we'll get older, older So let us dance this side away Side away, older Let us 
Okay, I'm back from my snack break and I have a cleaning tip for you guys. So if you have spots on your wall, try a magic eraser before you take the time to do a paint touch up. Magic erasers get rid of so much stuff. No one else can see ya. So let us dance the side away. Okay, let's check in on where we are at right now. So I just have these bins to go through. I love these reusable pouches. I got them on Amazon, I have them in a million different sizes, but I truly use these all the time for everything. For the kids, for me, for supplies. So I like to keep those visible so that I remember that I have them and I can keep using them. So I'm gonna give them their own little dedicated spot on the shelf. And now we're moving on to a new organization product that I recently purchased on clearance. It was either at Michael's or Joann's. I know I have a Joann's bag in front of me, but I'm not, that held our friendship bracelet strain, not what I'm talking about for the organization product. But I thought it would be perfect for all of our strain that we use to make our friendship bracelets. The kids and I love doing these. I guess it's called thread, not strain. Either way, the colorful, pretty stuff that we use to make our bracelets. We just recently got a ton of it, and so I wanted to have a system for that. And so I found, of course, a rainbow colored bin that held all of the strain. It was the perfect size. As you can see, they fit in there. And this is just good because then when we're looking for a certain color, we know exactly what to grab. If anybody uses this material, you know that it can get tangled and just chaotic very quickly. So I'm hoping that this will make that a little bit easier. So I was so excited to find this. Does anybody else just love organization products like me? I can't even describe to you the thrill when I found this and especially because it was 75% off. Oh my gosh, made my life. Okay, the last thing we need to do are to go through these different drawers. They're all labeled, and I just have to go in and just essentially declutter. So we're doing our piles. We're doing our trash pile, our donation pile, and then the pile of things that we wanna put back in. And then some of the stuff just belonged in a different drawer. The whole family uses these drawers and this closet, so it gets a little bit disorganized. No big deal, we're gonna clean it up. I had a million staples, I do not need all those staples, so I'm donating an entire bag of staples. When we get to the stamp drawer, I donated all the stamps. My kids just don't use the stamps anymore as much as I think it would be fun to just play with stamps. It's just not our thing. So it's time to move on and give them to a family who will actually use them. So I'm just gonna go drawer by drawer, get the donations going and just get everything organized as much as possible.
about everything we were able to accomplish today and yesterday. Thank you so much for joining me today and keeping me company while I took on this declutter and organization project in my whole house extreme declutter and organization series. This was episode two. I will link episode one where I took on our kitchen, but I will be taking on the rest of our house in 2024. So if you haven't hit that subscribe button, hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up. I hope this gave you some motivation to tackle a corner in your home. It doesn't have to be an entire room. It could be as simple as one drawer in your home. It, any small change can make such a difference in your life. Don't forget about my $100 cash giveaway. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Leave a comment on this video and all my other January videos. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye. I hope you are well. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Trisha Miller. I hope you'll hit that subscribe button and stick around because today we are taking on the master bathroom. I set a goal in 2024 to declutter and organize our entire house, top to bottom, side to side, all the deep dark cluttered corners, and today is the day for the bathroom. I am going to start by showing you guys how I like to do a deep cleaning on our bathroom. I'll share all my tips and tricks to save you time when you're doing that. Then I wanna go through and do a massive declutter on things we don't need. And then I'll show you some practical and affordable organization ideas that look nice, feel nice, but also don't cost a ton of money. I so appreciate each and every one of you being here. Let's get started. The first thing I always like to do is go through and just remove all the trash. So empty hand soap dispensers that have been sitting there for several weeks with no soap in them, the trash can bag. And then I will also go through and take out all the dirty linens. So all those towels that are on the floor from the kids, the hand towels, the rugs. Our big rug that's in there is washable, but I just recently washed it. So that just needs a good vacuum today. But I'll take out all the smaller things that need to be washed and just kind of get a little bit more of a clean slate so that then we can start to wipe down the surfaces get things out of there and then start to declutter. to use Windex when I'm cleaning mirrors. I have found that I, when I try to use other products, it leaves streaks and it just doesn't clean as well. And our kids like to set up their toothbrushes in their own bathroom, but then come to our bathroom to brush their teeth. So our mirrors take a big hit with their blue toothpaste. So I, needed, I need a product that's really gonna get the job done. And so I like to use Windex for that. And then I'm using Mrs. Myers to clean off the faucet and the countertops and I'll also use it inside of our sink. The other product that I love is Dawn Power Wash 
For anybody new here, I use Dawn Power Wash for the majority of my cleaning. I am not somebody who likes to overcomplicate my cleaning. When I find something that works, I will use it for every possible task that I can. And so that is Dawn Power Wash for me. And this little spinny brush that I'm using, this is another thing that I use very often. It's pretty affordable on Amazon. I'll link everything for you guys in the video description box that I use today so you can check down there for anything you're interested in. But I really love it. I'll use it in sinks. I'll use it in the kitchen. I just use that little spinny brush everywhere. And then I'll show you my larger spin brush that I use as well later on today. But these are just products that I use on a continuous cycle. They work well. They're easy. Again, I don't like to overcomplicate it. I've been looking for a new rug for our bathroom for the center where that fluffy white one is. Something more springtimey, summertimey that I can just switch out for those seasons and then I'll go back to this one for the fall and the winter. This rug was a happy accident. It is actually a faux fur rug. I did not realize what I was buying. Pictures can be very misleading online. I'm not typically a faux fur kind of a gal, but I love this rug. And so it's very fluffy, it's washable. I've washed it several times in our washing machine and it just on a normal cycle and it comes out so nice, but it's definitely more appropriate for cooler temperature months like late fall and all of winter because it is very warm when you step in it. So I want something just more seasonally appropriate for spring and summer. And that's what I like to do for a lot of our home decor. For pieces that I can get that are affordable, I like to do that so that I can switch them out with different seasons and I'm not spending a ton of money on one item. And so I like to do that just for things that are easy to switch out like pillow covers and rugs and vases and just little home decor pieces. Whereas I'll spend more of our money investing in pieces like a dining room table and a couch and the items that I'm not gonna typically switch out more. Those I think it's better to go for the more higher end higher quality items, but I just like to do more affordable pieces so that I can feel better about switching things out seasonally and just getting like a fresh slate and just some new decor with the different seasons. So let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions for a rug. I just want something that will have some of those spring pretty pastel-y colors to it and just brighten up the space and just give it a little bit more warmth because it's a very kind of cool toned bathroom with the whites and the blacks and the grays. So I definitely want to add a little bit more warmth to the space. Right now I'm just going through that larger cabinet in our bathroom. I've already gone through and organized and I can actually link the video where I did that organization system in there. And I'm really thankful for all of our bathroom storage space that is not lost on me how lucky we are that we have all of these cabinets and space in our storage. But that was honestly my biggest priority. We live in a new construction home and so we got to help design the home and storage was my number one thing. I kept every room that we went through with our builder when we were looking at the plans, I just kept asking how can we add more storage? Just knowing we're a large family and something I just wanna note though, just because you have the storage 
doesn't mean you need to fill it with things. And so that's a big priority for me as I'm going through and doing this decluttering and doing this organization because we brought so many things from our old house that just don't go with our new house. And so I'm trying to really be mindful and be real with myself as I go through all of this to not hold on to things that we don't need, bless another family with them, give them to somebody else, donate them. I always think about where the things are going to go and hoping that they can just help another family instead of just sitting in a cabinet in our house. So that's just always my intention and my motivation when I go through things. And so right now, this cabinet, it's more of just kind of resetting it and refreshing it because I already have the good systems in place that have truly been working for Steven and I. And so now I just want to go through and just kind of get everything back where it belongs. It's gotten a little bit, you know, chaotic and just disheveled in there from just little hands and big hands grabbing things and throwing things in there. So just getting it reorganized again and back to where it was. Okay, this drawer is a whole lot. These are a lot of products that I can't use because of my sensitive skin, so I'm gonna have to get rid of those. I would like to get this cleared out as much as possible so I can put everyday things in here, like deodorant, face lotion, things like that, so I don't have to store them up on the counter anymore. So let's see what we can do in here. Also, if anybody has any self-tanner recommendations, leave them in the comments for me. I don't know what I was thinking buying this. I think I used this like back in college and I thought I'd give it another try. This is not what I recommend. So if you have a self tanner, please help your pale girl out and let me know. As I'm having to throw away a lot of products that were barely used, I want to talk about the guilt 
that comes from decluttering and holding on to things because you spent good money on it and so it's hard to just throw stuff away. I have looked. I have yet to be able to find a place that you can donate products that have already been opened to. So let me know in the comments if you know of an organization that takes products that have already been opened but I haven't been able to find that. So I do offer them to friends and family before I just trash them but it's hard because when you use a product and you have sensitive skin and it gives you a reaction you can't use it anymore and it's not serving anybody sitting in your drawer so I just encourage you guys to try to release some of that guilt because what I also use is I, I learn from it so I know that I have sensitive skin so when I'm seeing myself having to get rid of these products that I've spent money on because I can't use them I think about that the next time I'm somewhere or I see an ad and I want to try something new I just think about the fact that I already have wasted money on things that I know are not going to work with my skin and so it helps me move forward and not to make those same mistakes of just buying a bunch of products that I truly am not going to be able to use and just overall being more mindful and intentional before purchasing something. I love how all of this turned out. So these are just my everyday items that I need and now they're tucked away. They're not gonna be on the counter, cluttering everything up. I have something we're gonna put together right here to put a few things on and then I have new foaming hand soap dispensers I wanna get going and we can kind of wrap up this area and then we will tackle both of those cabinets. I'm putting together a shelf that I got for our bathroom. I wanted to not only clean and declutter and organize our bathroom, but I wanted to give it just a little bit of a glow up. I always say to Steven that I want our bathroom to look like a grown-up bathroom, but what I think I really mean by that is just like a peaceful environment that brings me comfort. Because when you think about it, the majority of us, the first place we go when we wake up every single day is our bathroom. And if it's this cluttered mess, then my day starts cluttered, my brain starts cluttered. And so I just wanted a, like a place of peace. I wanted to put a candle in there so when I'm taking a bath at night, I can light a candle. And I just wanted it to just be comforting, relaxing, and not stressful. All right, here are our new foaming hand soap dispensers. I got these on Amazon. I will link as many things as I possibly can. I aimed for things that were more on the affordable side but still looked nicer. And then these I've been using for a while now. I got them on Amazon. They are foaming hand soap tablets. And so you fill these up with water. You drop one of these in. I think you have to wait an hour. Oh, only 30 minutes. So with these set up, I'll let you see all the foamy stuff that happens when it comes up. I love that. Do you love a good bubble moment? I do. So we're gonna fill these up, get them set up, and then I think we'll move on to our bottom cabinets. But I already just love how everything is turning out. So they come in a pack of two. So there's a taller one and a shorter one. They were super easy to put together. And these just slide out. And so I'm gonna build the other set and use them under the sinks.
extra storage in here. This is completely empty, so that's a good feeling. And then just everyday stuff for him, some extra soap and stuff like that. Looks really good. Okay, my cabinet is gonna be a whole nother story. I'm a little scared to go in here. Oh boy. Okay, so a lot of hand soaps. I can relocate those somewhere else. Maybe I'll keep some in here. And then I think it's just a bunch of boxes. Do you keep all the empty boxes when you buy face products and things like that? I don't know why I hold on to all the boxes. I think maybe for reordering, but then you can just look at the original container. I don't know. I think this is just a weird me thing. All right, let's get this going. Oh, here you are, face to face in this trashy bar. Another glass and I am going places, makes me laugh about the irony of everything. I like the way you think and I don't really care about the music on the dance floor. Once I started actually going through it, I discovered it was just a lot of trash that was under here. And so I'm keeping the vinegar in the very back. We have some peroxide there and then some extra Epsom salts that I'll keep in the back. And then it frees up these. And so as I kind of organize our house and keep going through this decluttering and organization mission that I'm on, I know that I'll be able to maybe put cleaning products here. I just love leaving empty space. And then if I need to put stuff there, I can later on. But for right now, I do not feel pressured to fill it. I also want to show you really quickly, these come with dividers that you can put in. I didn't need them for either of them, so I'm just gonna store them in here in case I do need them later on. All right, it's time to get after the toilet. I just wanna show you what I like to use. So I go for disposables when it comes to this cleaning the toilet because I don't wanna risk cross-contamination, so I just go with Lysol wipes, my Clorox cleaning wand, I love this thing. And then to do around the bottom, you can see all that just gross yellowing and stuff. This is the product that I use, but I mix it and dilute it with some water. I just used an old Mrs. Myers bottle and I just say, no pee. So we're gonna get rid of that pee smell. All right, let's get it. I don't see the logic of things. It's quite a I wanted to demonstrate these new soap dispensers for you guys because I was very pleased with how well the foaming action worked. So these are good ones. And now I'm moving on to the bathtub. The biggest challenge with our bathtub is that tiny little hole underneath of the faucet. And I don't even remember how I found these cleaning tools, but I found this little crevice cleaner tool that I can, that fits perfectly in there. There it is. A toothbrush wouldn't fit in there. I mean, I couldn't find anything that would fit in there and it gets really, really gross really, really quickly. It's, I think it's just a, a drain. Maybe somebody can tell me what, what the purpose of that tiny little hole even is in our bathtub. But then I'm also using my spin brush, but that little crevice tool I also use to clean the plastic barrier that's on the bottom of our shower door. So I'll show you that in a second. So now we're gonna move on, scrub our, down our bathtub. I've been using 
you saw me kind of organize it at the beginning. I call it my relaxation station, but I've been using these Epsom salts a lot in my bath, but I've also been using these path pebbles that have essential oils. And so it does make the bathtub get a little bit oily and just dirty faster. And so I've been using my scrub brush to clean it off and it just works so quickly and it's so nice and quick. And then once we get done with the bathtub, we will move on to the shower. But if I fall, I will get up again. This thing under our door gets really gross. I'll try to get it to zoom in so you can see. I mean, look at all of that. So that's where I use this tool again. I just saved it from when I used it on the bathtub. It's the only thing that will fit inside of this and then I can kind of just whittle away at all the yuckiness and get it looking better. But I get up, I always do. close-up of the shower so we have just some of that pink stuff forming on here that is just disgusting so we will handle that first and then just a little bit of scrubbing on the tiles but overall not too bad I'm gonna do my Dawn power wash everywhere but then I'm also gonna use my spin brush and add some of the pink stuff and see if that helps oh and I want to do this too the cord just gets like this gunk in it, so I want to clean that and then the shower head.
last thing I need to do is clean our shower door. So I have perfected this method. It is so simple. So if you have a glass shower door, I highly recommend this. All you do is wet the door down, take Dawn Power Wash, spray it pretty generously all over, use a sponge, gently scrub down your glass door, rinse it off with water, and then take a squeegee and squeegee off all the excess water. It makes your door sparkle and shine. It looks so good. The key also is to make sure that you're keeping that squeegee close by and try, you know, every shower or two to just squeegee off all that excess water and that will make it last longer so that you truly don't really have to clean your shower door that often. At least that's what's working for me. So I recommend it. And thank you so much guys for joining me today. I will give you an overview now of everything, but it just feels so good to get our bathroom done and just to continue on this declutter and organization journey in our home. I so appreciate you and your time. I hope you guys are having an incredible day and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Hello friends, I hope you are well. Today we are doing a complete clean, declutter, and organize project on our middle son Liam's bedroom. I'm gonna walk you through the process that I go through when I'm taking on a big project like this, like a kid's room. It can feel a bit overwhelming, so I will show you what I do to keep it simple, and it feels so much better when you are done. I also wanna show you how I have a very affordable organization system that I purchased from Dollar Tree and some things that were on clearance. So I'll show you just some things that I look for to help me with these projects. And if you are new, I hope you will hit that subscribe button and stick around. I'm so thankful each and every one of you are here. Let's get started. I wanna first start by stripping all the linens off of Liam's bed. That way I can get those going in the washing machine. I can set a timer on my watch so right when they're ready to be switched over, I can do that so hopefully the timing will work out where his linens will be clean when we're wrapping up the decluttering and cleaning and organizing in his room and I can then finish it by making his bed again and everything will be good to go. Have you ever washed I don't think it's a tissue, it might be a napkin in the laundry. It is everywhere. I'm gonna show you. I feel like I should just rewash it. I think if I put it in the dryer, it's just gonna to stick to the clothes. Oh no, what do I do? Oh, this is where I wish you guys could just answer me right away and tell me what to do. Dilemma. I'm gonna put it in the dryer. I'm gonna take a chance and hope that the dryer vent will just collect all of the pieces of napkin slash tissue and hope for the best, but I will show you the current situation. <laughs> now here's the jacket that I just threw in and that's what clued me in. There's little white pieces of something all over it. And kinda, it's gonna be hard to show you, but you can see it's just all over the place. Well, we're gonna take our chance with the dryer and hope that it works. Stay tuned. The worst thing I ever accidentally washed was a diaper not once, but twice when the kids were much littler. Have you ever done that? Oh my gosh, those beads go everywhere. It was crazy. in here I have three phases that I go through first one trash I'm gonna go through the room I'm gonna collect all the trash that I see step two declutter take anything out to donate that I know that Liam doesn't need there's just too much in here Pokemon cards he's not even has been into Pokemon cards for at least over a year. So I know I can, I got his permission. I can remove the Pokemon cards. And then the last step will be to get the organization system in, actually four steps. Organization system and then clean. I want to give this room a thorough cleaning. I'm talking windowsills being dusted, obviously vacuuming, wipe things down. There's just a, a staleness to the air, if you know what I mean. So we're gonna handle that. All right, that's our plan. And drink lots of coffee. 
always drink lots of coffee. I joked about the Pokemon cards because for a good probably year and a half, two years, Charlie and Liam were obsessed with Pokemon cards. I would find Pokemon cards everywhere in our house, places you would never even expect to find Pokemon cards. And they asked for them for birthday and Christmas and Easter, just any time they could get more Pokemon cards, that's what they wanted. And But I never, I feel like they never truly understood the world of Pokemon. I definitely never did. It's just, it's a little bit confusing. I know there's games you can play. I'm sure somebody out there understands Pokemon and could probably explain it more. But I am not sad that that stage of our life is over because those cards were everywhere. Although now they've just been replaced with hockey cards and baseball cards and football cards and basketball cards so maybe we're not completely out of this world but at least we're one step closer all right i want to show you he has all of his sports cards just kind of scattered on here i got some bins from dollar tree that i'm going to set up here to hold the sports cards because he does want to hold on to them so we'll get this this shelf organized with some simple bins and then that will feel so much better. Do your kids like to make the bracelets with these little rubber bands? Liam loves to do it, but as I'm going through his room, they are everywhere. I really need to go through Charlie and Rory's rooms as well, but I'm purposely starting with Liam. So for anybody new here, we have three kids. We have an 11 year old son named Charlie, nine year old son Liam, that's whose room we're in right now. And then our six year old daughter Rory. And I typically will start with Rory's room or Charlie's room when I'm gonna do something in each of the kids' rooms. And I don't know why, I just do it without realizing it, but I thought about it before I did this and I thought, you know what? I'm not falling into that poor middle child stereotype. I am gonna start with Liam's room this time. So I'm gonna dedicate this video to all the middle children out there. This one is for you. We are gonna give Liam that time and attention that he deserves and he was so excited when he came home. The only thing I told him, because I wanted to get permission to kind of de like declutter and get rid of some stuff, the only thing I told him is that I was gonna spend some time in his room trying to organize a little bit it. and so that's all that he knew and when he got home he was so happy and so excited so yay for all the middle children out there just want to show you guys really quickly what I am dealing with here it makes me want to kind of just give up because there is so much in here but we got this I just have to think about how amazing the end result is gonna be and I'm doing this for Liam Let me tell you this, let me tell you right now Your exquisite kiss, still burning Didn't know I missed this passion in life Now I'm addicted So now let me tell you why What is up with your smile? It's impossible, not melting Irresistible When I look through your eyes Not even sky's the limit I used to be satisfied all of that storage space now. All right, so let me just kind of explain what I'm doing here. I know it looks like chaos, but it is organized chaos. I have the books that I know Liam wants to keep. These are books that I'm gonna save for Rory because I know Liam is done with them. These are gonna go under the bed. I have some really cool storage bins that I'm gonna show you guys that are gonna go under his bed. It's basically just piles of different things that I know he's gonna still wanna hold on to. So we're gonna get all of that organized in the next stage, but now, the time has come. We are gonna go where no parent wants to go, and that is under the bed. Me when you hold me so close, I want better in under your skin. Wanna leave a mark so that I can be sure that you remember what's been. I used to be satisfied. Stayed over the surface. Now I just can't get enough. You make me feel good like no other. Okay, I'm gonna try to show you how gross the dust is under his bed. I feel terrible that he's been breathing this in. So I'm gonna go get the vacuum, we're gonna try to get this, and then there's a couple toys under there that I can't reach, so I'm gonna have to get creative. All right, let's get this cleaned up. Oh yeah, okay. I think it worked. Look at all of that tissue in there. Now we just have to check the clothes, but maybe just going ahead and throwing them in the dryer was the right solution. Is that what you were yelling at me from your house when you were watching this? If so, thank you. Clearly I heard you. 
All right, fingers crossed that it's still not all over the dryer. I think we're okay. Yeah, okay. Nice. It worked. Thank you for manifesting that, putting it out there. So I made the right choice. I probably should have brought a laundry basket in here and that would have been the right choice as well. That's all right. Oh no, we dropped one. All right, I'm gonna go put these on my bed. This is gonna be a later problem. Then we're gonna get back to Liam's room. I think some were still left in the washing machine, but as we know, they're gonna come out of the dryer, so I'm not worried about it. break to recover from that debacle but we finally got all that nasty dust from underneath his bed so I feel so much better about that should have just thought about a broom to begin with vacuums are not the only thing that exists so just a reminder to anybody out there who is like me and doesn't even think about an old-school broom it was perfect so here's my plan I have to do just a little bit of organizing before I finish decluttering in the closet. The closet is mostly clothes, but I need the bed cleared so I can use that to declutter the clothes. So I think I'm gonna place these items where they're gonna go, and then we'll get to the fun part after all of that and do our organization bins. I love organizing. All right, get it all moved out of the way, and it will get an organized place soon. Today, today is the day. In addition to decluttering and organizing Liam's room, I kind of wanted to do just a little mini makeover, refresh, whatever you want to call it. But I do want to get new bedding for Liam's bed. He, the comforter, you'll probably notice when we put it back on, it's actually a king size comforter and his bed is only a full size bed. So it's way too big. So I want to get just properly fitted bedding for him. And then he got some pictures right there, the basketball pictures for Christmas. And so I want to get those put up on the wall for him. We have Michael Jordan, of course, a classic. And then just some fun basketball. Clearly basketball is his favorite sport. So these looked really good and I was excited to get those up on the wall, but I really wanted to get some bedding. I went to Target to try to find it. I got distracted by the dollar spot and completely forgot the reason that I went to Target. Does that ever happen to you? It happens to me more often than I would like to admit. Um, I am using command strips to put them up on the wall. Because he's a kid, he will change his mind probably pretty soon about what decor he wants. So I like to just do command strips instead of putting holes in the walls. These were really light and a little trick for you if you're using the picture frame command strips like what I'm doing right now, you can cut them in half to make them skinnier. These frames are really, really light. So I didn't really need more than just one and a half on each of the frames. So you can cut it in half and really cut them any way that you want as long as you still have that little tab 
to be able to pull them off safely off of your wall. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the closet, get everything off the floor, and just start working some magic in there. Okay, now that we can actually see the floor, it's a little less overwhelming. So these are Lego sets that he got for his birthday and for the holidays. So I think I'm gonna take those and get like all of this organized up here and then clear a spot for them up there. That way he can just kind of take his time with them because right now he started one and they're on plates and I know pieces are gonna go missing. So I'm gonna grab some Ziploc baggies because if your kids are like mine, if they're missing pieces then they no longer want anything to do with it. So we're gonna fix that really quick. These are just extra comforters. I don't know why I had those in here, but I'm gonna move those. And then here's the, the rubber band bracelets that he loves making. Anybody else have a fire ladder in their closet? That's just how my brain works. And then we're gonna go through all of this. Okay, we got this. When it comes to anything safety related, I fall for an, a Target ad anytime. So those fire ladders were an ad that popped up and immediately when I saw them, I thought, oh, we are not prepared for a fire in our house. I have to purchase a ladder for multiple bedrooms upstairs in our home. Not that my kids would even know how to use that ladder, but in my mind, it still just made me feel better. I also fell for the fire blanket ad that they, have you seen that ad put up, put up where they have a grill that sits on fire and they throw the fire blanket on top of it? Now. I am a former high school science teacher, so I know all about fire blankets and they do actually work. But my point is, sometimes my anxiety takes over and I purchase products that I just, they just help me sleep at night. Does that happen to anybody else? So now I'm just going through all of Liam's clothes. I really want to take the time to remove anything that no longer fits him. There were some hidden sizes that had been there for a while that I know were not going to fit him anymore. And then also, just because something is the correct size, it doesn't necessarily mean it still fits him. And I can just kind of eyeball and look at something and know if it's going to work or not. Because not all sizes are created equal. They can all be the same size, but the brand matters. And sometimes things just don't wash well. They'll shrink up a little bit. So I'm just going to go through, get you know, donate all of that stuff. Look at his bathing suits because now is the time to purchase the summer bathing suits which seems a little bit crazy in February but this is when they're all coming out and I feel like if I don't get them now then the ones that Liam likes or the ones that are going to actually fit him aren't going to be available so I want to take the time to see what we truly need because at the end of the day when we take the time to declutter and organize it does save us money because we can see what we need what we don't need and then we can really focus our attention on the things that are important and what are needed versus just buying extra stuff just in case. Also, tell me if this applies to you. I feel like this is definitely a mom thing. And if you're a dad out there, please correct me in the comments if you can do this. But as a mom, I can look at a piece of clothing and know if it's gonna fit one of my kids. I don't have to look at the size. It's just like this instinct where I just immediately know. And I, I say it's a mom thing because my husband, Steven, does not have that instinct. He will look at it and say, oh, it's size medium, we're good to go. And I'm like, mm, but it's a small medium. <laughs> or, oh no, that's a large medium. <laughs> Let me know. Is that is that a mom thing? What do you think? closet had a true floor. This feels so good. I was able to get so many clothes to donate. Clearly he does not wear very many long sleeve shirts. It's all organized up here. All the Lego sets that he needs to build fit right there. I was able to take a lot of his Legos that he really likes and display them in here. And now the last thing I want to do in here is pull out each of these bins and then go through them for some more decluttering. And then I think it's organization time.
I just wanted to show you the donation pile. I feel so good about this. This is all clothes, which I'm actually going to give to my friend for her son. And then all of this. And then a backpack. So this feels really good. I leave the TV on. I'm done with your sad eyes. I can take another night with you on like this. So let's go. For my favorite part, the organization side. Let me show you what I purchased that I'm going to be using. All very affordable. So these all came from Dollar Tree. I got a larger, I got three larger size, just fabric bins. And then I got the smaller version of those, all just this light gray color. I think I'm going to put all of the sports cards inside of these. So I think I'm, these are gonna go on the shelves. I also have these, and I can save these for the boys' bathroom if I end up not using them. But again, these are from Dollar Tree. They're just wire gray baskets, and I got three of them. This was the product that I was most excited about. I was at Joanne Fabrics looking for different holiday paper to decorate our mantle for St. Patrick's Day. These bins were on super clearance. I'd never heard of them. So the brand is called Top Notch. And I got them like 70% off. Normally they seem a little expensive in my opinion, but 70% off, oh my gosh, it was a steal. And what I love about these is that it has a like a tray table on the top. So I'm gonna put them under his bed and put different activities. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. As I was saying, I'm excited because I'm going to set these under his bed and I think that this tray will be great for him to do activities at night when he's having a hard time falling asleep and these will fit perfectly under his bed. I'm just really excited about these. All right, let's organize. Suddenly there you were with those bright blue eyes We were conversing into the night sky When you took my hand said let's leave now Don't wanna be shy I will let my guard down Don't wanna be shy
My plan for these three bins are to go underneath Liam's bed and I'm gonna fill it with his activities that he'll do at night when he's kind of winding down or if he's having a hard time going to sleep. He is my art loving kid through and through so I wanted to do all the markers, all the special pens, crayons, lots of paper for him to get creative at night. And like I already mentioned, I love the lids on these bins because he can just set it up on his bed and it can be like a tabletop for him to be doing all of the drawing. So I just wanna get everything organized and then use my favorite reusable zipper pouches. I got them on Amazon. I will link them for you guys. Hi, Annie. Of course, she joined the mix. If you're new here, Annie is our dog. She is by my side all day, every day. She's usually napping the majority of the day, but she heard the commotion up in Liam's room when I was vacuuming, so she had to come check it out. She is three years old and she is quite the character. These are the bags that I'm talking about. I use them for so many different things. I'll use them in the summer to put snacks in our pool bag. I'll put my cell phone in there when we go to the pool because they're waterproof. We use them for games, to pack activities for Rory. I mean, just, I use them for everything. They are the best. I have them in lots of different sizes and colors. Cannot recommend them enough. They are very durable. I have yet to have a zipper break on them. So I'm gonna get those, I'm gonna get everything organized in these bins and then get those under Liam's bed. Don't wanna be shy I will let my guard down I wanna laugh out loud All right, so here is how I organize these. Let me zoom out a little bit. So this is gonna be the bin that has all the color and stuff. So all the markers, crayons, colored pencils, all that stuff. This is all of the books that he can draw in. And then these are watercolor brush pens. I'm just gonna keep them in here because they would not fit in there. And then these are just activities. So some little stress balls. It says, be quiet, be calm, be kind. How sweet is that? And then a game pad, some chess that he and Charlie could do at night, Mad Libs. And then these are just multiplication cards. Liam loves math. So he actually enjoys doing multiplication cards at night. <laughs> All right, so let's get the lids on and get these under his bed. I've seen those faces, I've heard all the lies, but you ain't gazing on someone in denial, cause you want dollar bills right now, but you gotta for hanging out with me today. If you haven't already and you're new here and you like today's video, I hope you will hit that subscribe button and stick around for more. Please say hello in the comments. I love to hear from you guys. I hope you are having an incredible week and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. I know you want it.